A new study found microplastic gets concentrated in your brain. In fact, the concentrations of microplastic in deceased subjects' brain, as we're going to talk about in this study that was published in Nature Medicine, was between 7 and 30 times greater compared to other tissues in the body. Now, I think this is really important, and this is not to scare you. This is just to let you know that you need to take this very seriously because it turns out that the brain, because it's fat soluble, these microplastics are lipophilic in nature and so forth, maybe they have a propensity to get stored within the brain and cross the blood brain barrier where they can induce damage within the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala and other parts of the brain as this analysis found. As I mentioned, this was published in 2025 in the journal Nature Medicine. The title of this paper is Bioaccumulation of Microplastics in Decedent Human Brains. So they analyzed roughly 20 some odd uh, brains uh, from deceased individuals. They died from a, a variety of different causes. But the investigators also looked at other tissues, not just the brain, the liver, pancreas, uh, kidney, and also the brain. But as you can see here from figure one, part A and B, the concentration of particularly polypropylene and polyethylene, which again, this is found in our food packaging. It's found in our water. It's found, guess what, in your clothing, your furniture. This stuff is everywhere, which is why we need to be more mindful of this. And I'll talk about strategies momentarily. But let's dive into this in a little bit more depth. The investigators say the present data suggests a trend of increasing microplastic particle concentrations in the brain and the liver. The majority of microplastic nanoparticles found in tissues consist of polyethylene and appear to be nanoplastic shards or flakes. Micro nanoplastic concentrations in normal decedent brain samples were between 7 and 30 times greater than the concentration seen in liver or kidneys. Now, why would we care about the liver or kidneys? Well, as you know, these are your body's main filtration or, uh, organs. And so, if they're ending up in the brain, not the organs that are responsible for filtering them, that's of concern. Now, it's important to recognize that we also see microplastic particles concentrate within the carotid artery. Uh, there's research showing that it concentrates within the placenta, as well as the penile tissue, where it's linked with erectile dysfunction. So we've addressed those studies before, and this is one of the first reports of its kind to find that microplastic particles are now found in the brain, which is which is totally frightening. So before we go on, I just want to thank our show sponsor for this episode, nadsunder.com, the makers of certified organic cotton underwear. Now for men, this is really important because as I mentioned, we know that we have these microplastic particles in all sorts of commercial clothing. And why do we care about our underwear? Because when you're exercising or you're going in the sauna, you're sweating, you're moving your body, you're moving your pelvis and your legs are rubbing against your boxers, you could be releasing microplastic particles that could inadvertently affect your sexual health, re reproductive health, hormonal health, and possibly the functioning of your brain now that we know that these things are stored in the brain. So that's why I love nadsunder.com. Certified organic cotton, they are amazing. They fit really well. I've had my uh, uh, several pairs. I got like six or seven pairs. I've had them for well over a year. I travel a lot, sit on airplanes and Ubers and stuff, and they are super comfortable. But most importantly, my friends, they are protecting your body. I no longer go to Nordstrom Rack and get the cheapest pair of boxers that I used to get because I only wear NADS under underwear. Uh, they're amazing. I think a lot of people in the health space are turning to this because we all recognize that this is something that we need to be serious about. It's not just avoiding, you know, plastic uh, you know, water bottles and drinking out of disposable coffee cups. We have to think about our clothing as well. So definitely go to nadsunder.com forward slash HIH to save. They make amazing boxer briefs that you will absolutely love if you're a health conscious male or have one in your life. So I'll put links in the description below. Now, getting back to the study, really interesting. The investigators say brain samples from dementia cases exhibited even greater micro and nanoplastic particle presence. These data, they say, are associated and do not establish causal roles for such particles affecting health. However, I think it's important that we recognize that if your brain is full of plastic, your brain is probably not going to function very well or optimally. So it makes sense that we take mitigation strategies to reduce exposure to these microplastic and nanoplastic particles. Uh, as you just heard, it's really important. You know, clothing is a great place to start. Food packaging 
is another wonderful place to start. Not drinking out of plastic water bottles, trying to bring your own stainless steel mug when you go to a coffee shop or ask or request for the ceramic mug at the coffee shop. I mean, most places that I've been to are totally cool about doing that. Certainly not putting in, uh, you know, microwavable food wrapped in plastic and the microwave and cooking with that. Uh, heat and plastic are not a good combination. So I think that's important. Okay. I also want to focus in on these images here. This is figure two. As you can see from these microscopy images, there are numerous microplastic particles within um, the prefrontal cortex brain tissue. So this is, again, not a conspiracy theory. This is not woo-woo science. Uh, this is real evidence. And it just corroborates with what we already know about microplastic particle accumulation in the carotid arteries in, I think, the aorta. There was one study. And then we also have the penile tissue, the placenta, um, breast milk. I mean, it's getting everywhere. It's time we really focus on this. Now, in conclusion, Given the exponentially rising environmental presence of micro nanoplastic particles, these data compel a much larger effort to understand whether micro and nanoplastic particles have a role in neurological disorders or other human health effects. So I think this is fascinating. What do you think? A lot of you might be asking, well, what do I do? I mean, let's say you've been eating fast food or you've been drinking out of plastic water bottles for a long time or even cooking food in the microwave and you're like, well, what do I do? I really don't know. I, I think anyone who is very confident that they have all the solutions in terms of how to sort of detoxify or eradicate these particle concentrations from your brain or your liver or your kidneys, um, I, I think they would be just speculating. And I will speculate here. I think going in the sauna is a great place to start. We know that heat in, is a natural way to sort of massage and activate our circulatory system and also our lymphatic system. So, um, we can help to excrete some of these things, possibly through the urine or through the sweat, which uh, makes a lot of sense. We know from the blood urine sweat study, the so-called bus studies by Stefan Jenis at University of Alberta. He's conducted a lot of studies finding that sweating and you know, hot yoga and, and sauna therapy and so forth is a great way to um, release heavy metals, persistent organic pollutants, and possibly microplastics. So I think, um, you know, moving every day, that's part of why we exercise, not just to like burn calories and move our muscle and lower blood glucose, but to also help detoxify and eradicate or eliminate these um, harmful chemicals, even plastics from our bodies. So that's what I would suggest. There's also a myriad of different blood filtration te techniques that have been you know, popular in, in Switzerland and parts of Europe for a while that are coming uh, to the U.S. That could be another uh, tactic or strategy that people should consider. But I think it's important to know that we have like large amounts of these things in our liver, our kidney, and also our brain. And, and this is really um, something that we should be paying attention to. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I appreciate you tuning all the way to the very end and we'll catch you on a future video down the road. Bye now.